All right, what's up? Hope you guys are doing good. And today we're chatting about watches. So five years ago, I picked up the Series 3 Apple Watch. To this day, it's still my go-to watch. I haven't really found the need to upgrade. It does everything I want, gets me through the day, and I love it. Now, in reality, if I'm looking to do something a bit more rugged or outdoorsy, I'm gonna leave the Apple Watch at home, and I'm gonna pick up something like my G-Shock, or a Garmin if I want that feature set. But now Apple releases the Apple Watch Ultra and they're trying to blend together that smartwatch and sport watch world, where maybe you don't have to leave your Apple Watch at home anymore. This is at least what we're being told to believe. Now I'm gonna be real with you. When I saw what looked like a guy climbing Everest with an Apple Watch, I was like, Okay, Apple, we're talking some legit game right now. I put the Ultra on alongside the Epic's Garmin since release, and we got ourselves a bit of a watch battle. Now, I'm also under the impression that people that aren't insane outdoor watch enthusiasts are also gonna be interested in this watch because it does have some upgrades that a lot of people have been looking for in the newer Apple Watches. So we'll just jump back and forth between what I think is the Ultra's biggest sport watch competitor now. Both these watches do hover around the same ballpark price range. Now this is the first time I think we've really seen more of a redesign on the Apple Watch frame, and that's mainly because they decided to toughen this thing up. If you've ever played those games where you armor up and put like a plate on, this is essentially what I'm showing you. It's an Apple Watch that essentially armored up and put on a juggernaut suit because that's what the Ultra's kind of new ruggedized body represents. The new frame is using titanium as the main material now, which honestly was an awesome choice. So the characteristics of titanium are really good for housing watch components. It happens to be lightweight, conducts heat poorly, is more durable against impacts, and it's also about 50% lighter than stainless steel. And I think you definitely feel the difference in the weight. Unfortunately, it's not inherently scratch proof. Like I do have this tiny little micro chip already. You really can't see it that well because the finish does seem to hide these pretty well. Now I would have loved to have seen like a black titanium DLC finish because right now we're just limited to one color and anything that comes in black, especially titanium, is, it coming? is really nice. Now there is already videos of people beating the absolute snot out of these watches and they seem to be holding up pretty well, especially against the Series 8 watches. Now, head to head against the Epics, I can't completely destroy both of these in testing. No one sends me these, but I feel like the Epics is still that watch that you'd pick if you were going into like the zombie apocalypse. It's got these polymer reinforced sides, it's a titanium build, and the more classic rugged design just feels like if you happen to beat it up, it's not gonna be as big of a deal like beating up that pristine minimal Apple Watch design. And before we even talk about the display, let's talk about buttons, because I feel like that's another element that already kind of represents that new wave of design with the Ultra in the name. The frame juts out the side and envelops the crown with this shield of material. Plus the buttons are a bit more exaggerated so they're easier to hit. And you don't have to fuss with tiny controls if you've got gloves on or just completely drenched in water. Now I've got two watches on now, like a crazy man. But you can tell that Apple's main interaction point with their watch is still primarily touch-based. Whereas a lot of other sport watches primarily choose to use physical touch buttons and it makes a lot of sense. Physical buttons can be a really good idea because wet touch screens happen to suck sometimes and we happen to live on a rock that's primarily covered in water so they just don't do as well. If you've ever tried using your phone screen sometimes when it gets wet outside or it's raining, it's kind of tough. So you can see where Garmin is using a mixture of a touch and button display with these five little buttons scattered around surrounding the display. Now the larger screen sizes are always nice if the form factor stays manageable. I think both these watches are a good size, especially if you're used to wearing like dive watches. But if you're normally a small watch person or have smaller wrists, it's gonna to be tougher to pull off. You know, I'm actually surprised that they didn't make a smaller version of the Ultra for especially women that have smaller wrists that also want the feature set. Maybe they could have just reduced the battery life just a little bit and made it in a smaller package because this watch does happen to be large for people that have smaller wrists. So the Ultra has a 49 millimeter face and the Epix has a 47 millimeter circular design. And both these versions have sapphire displays with titanium bump guards surrounding them. Last thing to mention regarding dimensions, the Ultra weighs in at 61 grams and the Garmin at 53 grams. Similar thickness on both, but you can feel that the Garmin sits a little lighter on the wrist. To be honest, I'm more focused on the displays of the watches rather than the weight anyways, because you can tell that these watches were both aimed to be more like tool watches to be used in direct sunlight. I think the Ultra literally has probably the best screen we've ever seen on a wearable. It's super bright outdoors at 2000 nit peak brightness, 
excellent colors, contrast, readability. It feels fast, but then again, the Epic screen isn't really a slouch either. It's using a thousand nit AMOLED display that also looks great. Both screens are completely flat, but I feel like one of the benefits of using a more squared off display is that the aspect ratio will give you a bit more usable space for reading or interacting with information in a UI. Now I wouldn't say that it's gonna offer a world leap of performance, but I do find myself interacting with this watch significantly more than I did with previous smartwatches. Now I am coming from a pretty old watch. Maybe it's not gonna be as big of a deal if you're coming from like a series six, seven, but it's a great watch. The screen's really big. Now the touch display on the Garmin is not at that same level of smoothness like the Apple Watch. It feels like it's a bit behind, not as snappy. But you have to remember the Garmin is a multifunctional watch. So you can completely disable the touch screen if you're not into that. And you just wanna use buttons because buttons are awesome if you're in an outdoor environment where you don't wanna fuss with a touch screen. It really comes in handy if you're in scenarios where touch is not gonna be the optimal choice. I'd say ideally in the perfect wearable, you'd have the fluidity of the Apple Watch display and the durability of the Epic's physical buttons. Now, of course, this is gonna vary on your scenario and your use case. So kind of like whatever you think you're gonna be using it for, I'd say shop accordingly. Now, if we talk about battery life, the Garmin is going to obliterate the Apple Watch in quite literally any battery life test. And there's a good reason for this. Battery life is gonna be relative to whatever the watch you're using is doing. So if I have a G-Shock, obviously it's gonna last longer than a smartwatch because there's less computational tasks being done. I want you to kind of think of it like this. Think of the Apple Watch as like a mini little tiny iPhone that sits on your wrist. It's gonna take phone calls with actual cell service, send texts, stream music, perform a lot of computational tasks with fancy graphics, a super bright display, and be a true sidekick to your phone where I feel like the Garmin is gonna serve more like a specialized tool for hardcore fitness tracking, GPS monitoring in situations that are completely off the grid, where you want your watch to survive and sip power by skipping all the normal smartwatch features you probably don't need at the time. So I've been getting around a safe 50 hours of general usage on the Ultra, and when I get to 10%, I've been putting it on low power mode. So the Garmin does last for days, and I think you can pull maybe three days of really intense usage out of it if you have the GPS on, heart monitoring, all the tracking features, just blasting. But the Ultra doesn't have completely garbage battery life. It's actually significantly better than the other Apple Watches. Garmin happened to take a shot at Apple on Twitter regarding battery life. I thought that was pretty entertaining. But yeah, it's kind of like a watch you don't really have to think twice about if you're picking it up, whether it was charged or not. And that's gonna be important for a lot of people, especially those who participate in ultra marathons that want the fitness features, or those who are the extreme outdoor enthusiasts that want really solid, great topographical map data. Now, if we really dive into the feature set, I think you'll be able to clear things up a bit if you're on the line. So the Ultra now has this orange little action button that you can map up to eight features in the app or craft your own shortcuts, even though it's pretty rough that way. You know, it's actually kind of nice to have this little button on the side. You can jump to a workout instantly without having to go through all these different menus. It's nice, you can also remap it once you're inside an activity to have a secondary function. So I think they did pretty good on the action button. I think it was a definitely a good idea. Apple's really come a long way in fitness tracking functionality. And I think this little button is gonna fit a lot of people's needs. Now, if I did a deep dive into all the Apple and Garmin health and fitness features, this video would be like two hours. So we'll talk about a couple of them. Both these watches collect heart rate, calories burned, sleep metrics, training data, but the Epix really gives you good feedback on those metrics and tells you what you should be doing with it. Like if I go on a run, all the metrics that are being collected on the watch are then gonna be analyzed, and then I'm gonna get feedback from the watch after I'm done running on how long I need to rest and recover. The Ultra does give you the classic activity rings, which is great for knowing how active you were during the day, and it makes it kind of like a competition between your buddies but it just really doesn't give you that much feedback into what you should do with the data. The Epix covers race prediction times, graphics to show overall improvement, and covers a lot of niche activities. It doesn't cover diving, which Apple's entering that world apparently now. Both these watches are rated for 100 meters of water, but the Apple Watch now has a dedicated dive app. They teamed up with Hewish to create Oceanic Plus. Now, I'm not the guy to truly review a dive app. Neither do I know how many professional scuba divers are actually going to use this as a true dive computer. But I think it does bring a nice amount of cool recreational dive features. It's covering auto dive logging, vibrational feedback, depth monitoring that alerts you if you're ascending or descending too quickly. Now, is it gonna be as fully fledged out as a professional dive computer, like something from Shearwater that covers all the features and sensor support? 
Even if it did, Apple's target demographic for this watch, the diving capabilities at least, seems to be recreational scuba divers that are actually gonna have to pay a monthly subscription for this app. Oceanic Plus is gonna be behind a paywall, so if you want the full functionality, it's gonna cost extra compared to pro dive devices that already have these features right out of the box. This doesn't really affect me that much because I don't think I'm ever really gonna use that app to dive, but if you're someone that's looking into this watch specifically for the dive features, it's something to be aware of. Now the Ultra does have a couple upgraded features that will hold it up better against the Garmin. It's got dual frequency GPS, so you now have an accuracy bump in tracking, and they also added extra mics and better speakers for audio in less ideal environments. Now the backtrack feature is a nice little addition to the Compass app. So if you happen to be hiking out in the forest and you need to get back to your camp or you're on a trail, it'll drop these little waypoints so you can remember your way back. We're seeing a nice little push from Apple into the outdoor market, which Garmin has kind of dominated for years. Now I think the waypoint feature is coming or it's already on the normal Apple watches. So it's not an exclusive thing to the Ultra. But overall, I feel like a lot of people are gonna lean on Garmin for actual off the grid activities. Both these watches have really accurate multi-band GPS systems that allow them to use multiple frequencies to reach out to more satellites, but the Garmin just has a track record that's really unbeatable. Even the Epic's workouts are filled with data-rich complications, recovery advisors. There's also a really neat feature that's called body battery that essentially turns you into a battery that shows discharge over the day. Apple has gotten a lot of more advanced workout updates that can now track running power, vertical oscillation, ground contact times, legit stuff that doesn't require additional sensors. But then again, strength training workouts on the Epic's literally guess the exercise you're doing and count the individual reps. All right, so both these watches are filled with a ton of features. Sleep tracking, workouts, outdoor activities. Both these watches are basically at the top of their game. I think the Apple Watch takes the cake at being the ultimate smart watch because this is way more of a smart watch than an outdoor sport watch and the Epix is like the ultimate sports watch. But honestly, it just depends on what you're specifically looking for in a watch. A lot of the Ultra's features are gonna be on the less expensive Apple Watches, so this isn't necessarily the best bang for your buck, but if you're okay with the price tag, this is definitely the best Apple Watch experience you can have. Now, if you're more of the outdoorsy person or the more fitness-oriented person that wants all the hardcore features and you're bare grillsing it up outside, the Garmin might be up your alley. That's pretty much everything. If you have any additional questions, feel free to drop them down below. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one.